All right. Is it working now? With the sound and everything? Is the mic working as well? All right. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Gun time. fiddling with uh, the streaming program last time. Apparently I shouldn't have done that. Just broke it. So today I'm gonna build a really 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 big ass sci-fi gun. build any other kind. It's probably gonna be a little less action than normally because I'm gonna try to design something that looks nice as well. See how that goes. And also, I've installed an APM counter, so that's going to be interesting to see. <laughs> How that goes. Um, not all the live stream models. I've only done one live stream model since I left Machine Game. I think. This is the reason. There's not really anything else to it. Um, actually, just you know, trying to get fast on purpose will get you a long way. Most people don't have that specifically as like you know target, but I have specifically tr been trying to uh, get faster. So. That's why I'm going faster and faster, I guess. Yes, apples. That is the reason. Hmm. 
guns are tricky. Because people are so picky with guns. It's so much easier to get away with random uh, sci-fi junk when you're doing some random prop. Yeah, it's so funny, everyone always have, you always get the funniest feedback when you're making guns. So everyone is just trying to apply, like, every, like, modern day uh, design and, like, functionality to, like, a sci-fi gun, which is always ridiculous. It's like, I don't know, I always complain about this. But I think it's ridiculous because it says, you know, you can't possibly, um, like, if you would do that with other, uh, like, things, people would laugh at you. Yeah, that's just a regular old bevel tool. No magic there. Good thing with like guns are that they are like pretty angular, so I can just boogie and the shit out of everything. Or like you know, guns don't have to be angular, but this one is. might end up going a bit faster than I thought so I might have to switch to another model before the stream is over well I don't care about topology it's my superpower to not give a shit Especially since it's a gun, it's not gonna have any, you know, it's not gonna deform. So I can actually, actually I can just abuse it. Like, however much I want. So I'm gonna do that today. Abuse it extra much. UVs, what are those? I'm gonna see if I can actually use the uh, preview renderer without the like motor just shitting itself on the stream dying. dead yet. Good.
favorite movie. I don't have one, but if it, I had one, it would be Blade Runner. Because it looks so good. Can't go wrong with Blade Runner. accidentally started building this model mirrored across the z-axis I always work with the x-axis and I'm confused gun even looks a bit like the Blade Runner gun uh, think about it here for whatever it is as long as I don't have to explain how anything works my APM counter. Oh no, it disappeared. Where's the options? That's not there. There it is. that I wasn't lying when I said that I had 250 APM. actions per minute. So close enough. I did play StarCraft. I was shit at it. So, uh. No! <laughs> Actually, it's a lot easier to have a high APM uh, modeling than when playing StarCraft. So, I was actually really surprised when I saw how high the, high the APM was. I thought it was gonna be really, really low.
Okay. Let's, let's make the ugliest of booleans. It's a bit too much. Well, the difference is that actually I spam less buttons when I'm doing modeling because I can't spam buttons when I'm modeling because then I would just do random commands. Actually, in StarCraft you can you can actually spam commands. It's a bit harder when you're modeling because uh, it's pretty hard to do anything, you know, spam commands without actually breaking stuff. But it's also because uh, when I'm modeling, you have uh, you have things like uh, the selection. Like I can select like a shitload of things. I can select 50 things in a row by basically just scrolling and using the select command like a ton of times. We can't do that in StarCraft. No, I don't. I don't have time to play much games at all, and definitely not anything that is like competitive. So I don't like to lose, and I would just lose. Pew pew! Let's just pray this doesn't kill the stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's like double the loss. Like, not only do you not get anything done, you also lose while doing that. So, yeah. Not, not for me anymore. There's not any gun nerds watching, so we'll get like a heart attack. The incorrect gun anatomy. Pew. Yeah, I've done a, a couple of cool gigs already. Nothing that I can talk about, but it was very, very cool. So yeah, it's 
Good stuff. No, no Overwatch jokes. <laughs> Payable blender? I don't think so. Just make the handle smaller so the gun is even bigger. Beep you! Okay, that looks ridiculous. Maybe not. There. Should probably wider as well. was that I wanted to do other things. I've been at machine games for uh, quite some time, like more than five, like five years almost. So just wanted to uh, try something else. Pretty much. So that's what I'm doing now. They're doing some really cool stuff. It's just I wanted to do something else for a bit. Ah, uh, no, that would not do. I finally moved all my scripts and macros and hotkeys over to Dropbox so that I can uh, actually switch between computers and have all my stuff there. It only took me like 10 years before I did that. And I highly recommend it. I'm not gonna smooth it, I'm gonna use the uh, Moto Rounded Shader uh, and uh, cheat basically. Or some of it I'm gonna use uh, sub D stuff for, but uh, most of it I'm just gonna hack. So then it's gonna look like this anyway. Uh, where's the. How's the level of the music, by the way? It's not too loud, right? So you can never tell, because I can't listen to the stream myself. We just there's a sound loop. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's like, it's much easier to live stream when you don't have to talk, because then you can just play loud music. Now I actually have to, you know, behave like a human while working. 
which is hard. I can't explain how the shader works. I'm not a programmer. Uh, no, but it's uh, pretty much takes all the uh, edges that are hard and uh, smooth this, uh, smooth them down on like shader level when you're rendering. And it also takes everything that's intersecting and uh, smooth this that down, uh, smooth that down. Oh my god, now there's questions here. Uh, actually, I normally don't use uh, that many. Uh, I'm using more bevels than I normally do for some reason. Because, probably because it's the gun. And uh, normally I don't use so many subdivisions because. I want it's easier to change surface like often I don't have any bevels at all uh, because then it's easier to change them afterwards um, because it's destructive modeling so I don't use that many but since it's a gun uh, the smoothing is more sensitive than my normal mech stuff and that's why I'm using it pretty much um, the booleans work perfectly fine in model you don't really get that many errors um, yeah this is model 10.1 version 2 the worst version number. No, oh, wrong. Or, or happy mistake. Happy accident. Ah, wait. Undo. There. <sighs> yeah, you can instance uh, objects. That's not a problem at all. I use instancing like all the time, pretty much. Uh, this is just, uh, I don't think I'll bake this one, maybe, probably just to um, show the modeling process. A gun is a nice quick little project, doesn't take very long to build a gun, so I can just, you know, do one in a live stream and then it's done, which is handy. Uh, I actually was pretty happy with how that one turned out uh, for being like no kit bashing. Um, actually, if you miss my streams, you can watch them on YouTube. I post all of my um, 
streams on YouTube more or less. Unless I make something really really horrible, I don't want people to see it ever again. Then I don't post it. Other than that, I don't want to post it. Um, but no, I don't use uh, support loops pretty much ever. It's only in certain cases where I really can't get the uh, smoothing to work properly with um, edge weighting. Because edge weighting is what I use most of the time actually. Uh, no, but you can uh, do things like uh, if you make a wall, for example, and you want to um, instance part of it, you can just instance that part and you can have the other things in like a separate layer on top of that. So you have like, say that you have a wall and in one instance it has a window and in one it doesn't, then you instance everything except the window and um, and put the window in a separate layer. Uh, I do. Subdiv, uh, open subdivs and uh, edge weighting. It's the best. Like for example, like this. Like magic. Thing. Next time I live stream, I'm gonna build something bigger and I'm gonna start kit bashing again because it was a long time since I kit bashed and like my speed, that's why my speed models are suffering a bit in detail. I think it's the same thing, but I can't say for sure because I uh, use whatever program that uses edge increasing. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Is relative, I guess, compared to what I should be doing, it really is suffering. So, let this shape up a bit.
Um, I have a tutorial about exactly about that, how to increase your speed. It's mostly motor related, but it's also some of the thought processes. You know, like, not just like specific tools, but more like what, you know, like my uh, line of thought when I'm trying to improve my speed. Because there's like several ways to go about it. And I have like that tutorial on Gumroad where I talk a lot about, you know, how I set up my uh, macros and the hotkeys and stuff and how I measure my speed. Uh, no plugins. that I'm aware of, at least. This is not a super good idea to be doing while live streaming, but this is a pretty cool way of working as well. Actually, that's a lot nicer. There we go. Ka-ching! Um, well, actually I work from home now, so I'm home all the time. I do this mostly in the evening, Swedish time. Because then I'm done with, or like in theory, done with my uh, work for the day. Yeah, how to get faster in Moto is the one. Nope. Uh, I uh, left machine games. I'm a freelancer. This app tracks like how the highest APM you ever recorded is. My is only at 350 while modeling. Have to beat it. That's not very good at all. That's not what I thought. Edges are smooth in renders, yes. Actually it's pretty fun experiment with the EAPM counter counter because it does make me want to speed up. It's like the same thing as listening to fast music, you know. It just forces me to be a bit faster than I should be otherwise. But like, there's a limit to how much I can take before I start, you know, slacking off again. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing pretty much for films and uh, for games. There's plenty of freelance in games. Not 
but most big studios use some kind of freelancing these days. Um, well, the uh, rounded shader, like the thing with Moto is that pretty much everything that you can render, you can also bake. So the rounded shader, for example, bakes down the same way that it renders. Um, so pretty much when you're baking, you can just basically take the bake channels, like the render channels that you have, like, you know, if you want to bake out the ambient occlusion pass, or if you want to bake out the... Uh, a reflection occlusion pass or you know whatever you can basically just render that out and bake that out so you can just uh, if I bake out and uh, uh, figure something out maybe uh, if you bake out the object space normal map you basically get all the uh, uh, stuff that you're doing in Moto and I use that a lot to uh, have things like procedural bump uh, stuff and so on. So that's pretty sweet. I like it. Um, yeah, basically, what happens with presets right now? There's a bug. So, if you drag drop a preset in uh, polygon mode, it crashes. So. Like, if you drag drop it onto something else, uh, so now you have to drag drop it not onto a surface or use item mode. Which, you know, also works, it's just that uh, I'm so used to doing it the other way and then that broke and then I get sad. Because I have to change and I don't like to change. So I'm a lazy bump. Yeah. I, ba I use this a lot for baking for low poly objects um, and yes it's, it works perfectly fine in games I have shipped, I've put stuff in a whole bunch of games now with the rounded shader in them. Uh, not really. The thing like in this case, I'm using uh, quite a lot of uh, sub uh, or like um, edge loops in the uh, um, in my bevels, but normally I don't. Um, so then I just reuse what I have. Actually, it's. Um, this way of working is very very fast because I can pretty much. It's not a very expensive uh, model as it is. I can just take every other edge and remove them, and then already it's almost in uh, like game only count ranges. It's a horrible one. couple of streams actually where I'm doing the uh, where I'm doing you know, low poly stuff. It's just that I normally don't do that like every stream because it's boring and I don't
So this kind of stuff is the best because it's so hacky and it works so well. Uh, it's unfair. Kind of. So if I would look at this in the render, it's like... Kind of works. Uh, I didn't do any uh, of the in-game art for Doom. I did some stuff for it. Uh, concept stuff and, uh, and some tech stuff for it as well. But no sexy high poly models. No. Boolean hackings. It's very rare that I manage to break the Booleans. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely in the style that I like. But there's none of my matches in there, I think. Okay, let's see. Let's see how it likes this. That'll probably work fine. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't even care. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> well, I mean, machine games have doubt on it, so it's no wonder. does not look better than Quixel. <laughs> it's just because it's just it's just uh, you know very basic render. What the hell? Oh, okay. um, if I would actually put some proper materials on it then it would look of course it would look photoreal because you know it's a proper offline renderer. 
bad at that. I was so good at that. So. Uh, I'm actually gonna try to make a new material preset now that I render this gun out after the stream. I'm trying to actually because I have so many materials just laying around and I have to recreate them like ish every time. So I'm just gonna try to collect them. So I actually have like a good library so I don't have to redo everything all the time. I just like Moto, to be honest, for like several reasons. It's, um, I used to work with Lightwave way back, and then uh, uh, I tried learning different programs. I tried learning Maya. I was using that for a bit, but I was using Lightwave back then. Um, and also, I thought you know. Since they made Doom 3 with Lightwave, I was like, yeah, it's awesome. I want to make Doom 3. Um, but then uh, my first job, they also used Moto and Lightwave, actually. So I kept using that. And then uh, my second and third job, they also used Moto. I could uh, have the option to use Moto, so I did. And I'm very happy for that. Well, it's not the same guys. Well, it is the same guys. Some of them, um, not the same company. Lightwave is still around. Apparently, I haven't used it in ages. Like since Lightwave seven, I think five or something. Um, Well, for me it definitely was. Ah, damn it. <sighs> I guess I should probably start dealing with some of the annoying errors that I've been um, avoiding this whole stream. Or I could just procrastinate and add more details to this instead. I'm doing what I should be doing. Everyone is excited over the fact that Moto finally got a modifier stack. I never really, well, or never, it's not true, but most of the time I don't feel like I have a need for uh, non destructive modeling. There are a few things that I would like to, uh, to be non destructive, but most of the time I don't really need it. But I'm gonna, I still haven't really uh, used the one in Moto. Um, so I'm curious to see how that one is. So I'm gonna start working with that soon. Put that into my workflow where it might be useful. No, I'm not using the attack tool yet. It's not really a priority for me since you know since it works pretty well. I have a lot of things in my workflow that does not work pretty well. 
So I'm prioritizing fixing my shit. How does that not work? Uh, there is no hotkey for that thing, that's a uh, custom one I made, so, sorry. Plus my hotkey for it is really really weird, and it's also not something you can have in order without modifying it. So, there's that. The thing with guns is that it so quickly becomes so detail oriented it's not really they're not really a good subject for streams because it takes about like I don't know, it takes about an hour to block out a gun or you know rifle or whatever and then you start noodling the details and that's not so sexy and you know sit and undo things and you perks around. Something. I do. I have a sketchbook, which is full with you know horrible drawings. Um, but that's it. Uh, I don't really use Photoshop because you know whatever I can draw in Photoshop, like as a concept, I can just imagine, but without the ugly <laughs> ugliness that comes with me drawing it. So, so not really any concept thing. No. the environment. That's not half-assed. Or it is half-assed, but it doesn't look so half-assed. Oh, 
Uh, and I should be doing some proper something, or I could just not. Shift key got stuck. <laughs> yeah, after making like two guns that had a chamber in the wrong direction, I finally like put it in the right direction. I think I just broke my keyboard. That's unfortunate. Yep. <sighs> okay, so if you see me doing really weird th things, it's because my keyboard is not broken. It's like my shift key stopped uh, stuck in the down position, but the shift is not pressed. But the thing is, like, I use shift like once per second, so it feels super weird. animations and they were not nice looking uh, no but I've done some animation sometimes I do like mock-up animations for my uh, models if I'm doing something that's animated because I need to uh, make sure that it can actually move properly uh, other than that maybe It's super weird to use the shift key now. I'm freaking out. It's pedaling too hard.
fingers everything feels <laughs> using the same mouse. It's awesome. I, I don't want to I don't want to switch because then I would have to you know get used to uh, something else and I also used to it. Like when I first got it I was I had so much trouble getting used to it because like my hand hurt because um, I wasn't used to it uh, the first few days it wasn't comfortable at all. Um, then I got used to it. And I'm also I've only been doing the the booleans here on like one side because I'm gonna, just gonna mirror that side later. Uh, so I couldn't, you know, be bothered. Just make sure that it was the uh, mirroring was on or off all the time. So I'll just fix that later. I'll just look at it from this side instead. And pretend everything's fine, and then forget about it, and then post it, and then people will see it. They forget about it. Smoothing errors. Ugh. Correct though. Oh, I don't care. So even if I'm doing like these booleans and I get some smoothing errors that are annoying and totally breaks everything, I can always just. Uh, hide them the old-fashioned way uh, which is just to uh, uh, just split the mesh no I actually save like the whole time like all the time just constantly uh, I'm not even aware of saving anymore. The good thing is that my files are usually like, like modal files in general are pretty small. Like, I always never have problems. Like, you know, like my biggest modal files are usually like, I don't mean, 50 megs maybe. 